of marriage. You ask any young man or woman, why don't you get married? They'll say, well, I'm 18 years old. I'm just a kid. Or at least that's what my, my parents keep telling me. That's what the people around me keep telling me. That's what society keeps telling me. Someone who is fresh out of, co fresh out of high school, right? Getting married is without a doubt something that's abnormal in this society. Not just in this society, in other words, non-Muslim societies. It's abnormal in Muslim societies, unfortunately. If you got married at the age of 18 in Iran, which is a country of predominantly Shia inhabitants and a population that are mostly Shia, right? It's abnormal. If you got married at the age of 18 in Iraq, it's rather abnormal, right? So society dictates to us what's right and what's wrong. And when we disregard our religious instruction and fall prey to the phobia that society plants in our head, the hadith of Imam Sadiq takes shape. When you start fearing everything else, when you refuse to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you fear everything else. So what if you're 18? Why don't you get married? Say it, how am I going to get married? What are you talking about? I don't have an income. I don't have a place of my own. Right? I could barely afford to pay my phone bill. How do I get married at that age? You see what I'm talking about? All of these are phobias. How, what am I going to, subhanAllah, I remember saying to a group of brothers and sisters. I said, when someone says I refuse to get married because I'm afraid that I won't be able to provide for my wife. You know what that's like saying? That's like saying, God, I love you. You're a great God. You've looked after, after me since I was born. You've provided for me, right? And you've done a splendid job. Right? I love you. But now, when there is going to be two of me, it's me and my wife, or me and my husband, I kind of feel like you won't be able to deliver. Because, I mean, you could probably get away with just one person, but two people? You know? That's kind of much. I mean, no offense. You're God and everything. You see how pathetic and absurd this is? What am I going to do when I get married? Well, what are you doing now? How are you surviving now? Are you begging on the street? Are you starving to death? Are you going through a famine? What's wrong with you right now? Who's feeding you right now? Who's giving your livelihood right now? Who's making your blood course through your veins and your heart beat non-stop even when you're asleep right now? Who's doing all those things? You see how irrational this fear is? You see why this is a phobia? I can't do it. Well, nobody expected you to do it. That is why the hadith says, Man tarakat tazweej. Imam Zain al-Abideen salawatullahi Are we not Shia Muslims? Who are we? Seriously, ask yourself this. Do we not believe the Imams when it comes to matters of the metaphysical world? Do we not believe them when it comes to things like heaven and hell? If we believe them on those critical and impossible to access topics, then why don't we believe them when it comes to simple things like these? The Imam says, whoever refuses to get married based on economic justifications, based on the phobia that I won't be able to provide for myself or for my family, it is because you do not trust God. Not only don't you trust God, you actually expect the worst from God. That's what Isa'at al means. These are phobias, brothers and sisters. And a phobia is as absurd, the phobia or fear of marriage is as absurd and pathetic as the fear of having a duck somewhere on the other end of the world staring at you. It's irrational. Don't believe the shaitan.
Do not fall prey to his deceptions. Nahnu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, it's a famous verse that's recited in every nikah ceremony, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِيَّكُونُوا فُقَرَاءَ يَرْزُقُهُمُ اللَّهِ يُغْنِيهِمُ اللَّهِ يُغْنِيهِمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ That's the actual verse. If they happen to be poor when they get married, in other words, get married when you're poor. Get married when you have no livelihood. Don't wait until the livelihood somehow creeps up on you. Don't wait for the money to be raised and saved up in the bank before you get married. Get married when you have nothing. And God says, I will not only provide for you, but I will make you self-sufficient. I know, I know, there might be some people out there, not here, alhamdulillah, but some people out there thinking, what is this guy talking about? He's so naive. Back in the day, maybe. Back in the day, you think I'm from the dinosaur age? I'm serious. Like, your parents, when they got married, like, how much money did they have? How much was their dowry? Did they have like a big house? Did they have a, a great job, for example, that made them feel secure? You see that, that, that word in itself? I want to feel secure. I want a good paying job. Secure, meaning I don't want to trust God. I want to trust the paycheck. I can't trust God. I have to trust some random guy telling me that at the end of each week or month, you're going to get a set amount of money. That's the only way we're going to feel secure. How pathetic is that? God's promise in the Quran, fails to deliver security for me. But if someone says, I'll give you a little bit of money, SubhanAllah. So that's one phobia. Phobia against marriage. 